What's up everyone, Azaro here, and welcome to my review of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie 2017. Um, in this video, I will be doing this guerrilla style. I just got off work, I'm tired, so it won't be any fancy editing or anything like that. You're getting it just like this, okay? Don't be mad at me. You know, I'm pretty sure somebody later on down the line will have their little fancy edits and everything like that. And they're not going to get in trouble for having, you know, movie clips in their video. Me, I'm not high on that food chain. So this is what the best you can get. Um, two, there will be spoilers and everything like that. So if you don't want the movie to be spoiled, don't watch it. I'm letting you know now because I don't want people coming... You know, later on down the, you know, later on down the line, why'd you spoil the movie? I'm telling you now, it's going to be spoilers. I'm going to be talking about the movie, so I can't really talk about it the way that I want to without spoiling the movie. So, again, if you don't want it to be spoiled, because I know for some people, you know, they want the experience to be fresh and brand new. For some people, like myself, you can't really spoil the movie for me, because even though if you say what happened in the movie, I didn't actually see it, so I can't really you know, say that it's spoiled for me because in order for something to be spoiled, you have to show it to me myself. And even then, like, you can't really spoil things for me. You know, it's not going to spoil the experience of me actually going to see it for myself. You know what I mean? So, I'm one of those people. So, but if you're one of the people that you don't want to hear about anything that happened in the movie and you just want to be completely surprised or completely, you know, um, or like you want the experience to be completely new, Stop watching this damn movie. I mean, stop watching this uh, damn video. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be fine. You ain't got to worry about hearing anything. Uh, three, I'm, I'm going to be highlighting the differences between the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series and this movie, which the movie is actually recreating uh, when the Power Rangers first met. The reason why I'm not going to compare <clears throat> the first Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie and this movie is because the the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie was more so of an introduction to Ivan Ooze. They are the Rangers already knew each other. They were already into I think like the second season of the first series where you know like the White Ranger got introduced. Um after Tommy lost his powers, you know, the Green Ranger powers started to fade. Um and then he got his White Ranger powers later on. Um, and so it was just an introduction to Ivan Ooze. They already knew each other at that point. Uh, and they were well, uh, you know, they were comfortable amongst each other. Like they were friends already. Plus, um, Zach, Trini, and Jason, they had already, you know, left to the, like the peace conference already. And Rocky, Aisha, and, and Adam had took their place already. So they were, you know, they are, they were already, um, friends with each other. This this movie, this new Power Rangers movie, was recreating how they first met and how they first got their powers. So that's the reason why I'm going to be comparing this, the first series with the movie because that's what they're recreating and telling my differences and telling what I think about it because there's some things in the movie that I liked, some things in the movie that I didn't like. There were some things that I didn't like, but they didn't do it in such a typical way that kind of made me appreciate appreciate it to where I didn't like hate it um and there were some things that I kind of you know want to touch on so I'm just going to be highlighting the differences between the two so again I am tired so forgive me if I fumble over anything like that um I, I gotta go I, I had to work from 6 to 10 it was a short work day but I got a long work day tomorrow um I just got home and I gotta wake up at 9 o'clock to get back to work at 9 I gotta wake up and get back to work at 9 o'clock in the morning. So, literally, forgive me if I, you know, fumble or anything like that. So, without further ado, those 4 minutes and 30 seconds of me, of of, of disclaimer. Oh, and another thing. You may hear some background noises. People opening up their doors and people having conversations and anything like that. Ignore that, please. Um, there's no way I can block that out. Especially doing it like this. Uh, but yeah, so that's all the disclaimers. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get started. So in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, you know they they introduced uh, Jason, Zach, Kimberly, 
and um, Trini and Billy. Uh, they're all high school students, of course, just like in the original series. However, there are differences. One, Jason is a high school, you know, football jock, star athlete. Everybody knows his name. Um, you know, it starts off with him doing like a typical, you know, football prank. If you guys are familiar with, you know, that type of stuff where he's bringing a cow to the rival uh, football team school and he's tying him up in the football team's locker room. Um, like he broke into the school and he did that. Cops come, he, ta he takes him on a wild goose chase and ends up getting an ankle bracelet after he gets caught. He wrecked the car, gets caught, ends up being on house arrest, gets put in detention. In detention, he meets Billy, you know, who's pretty much a monk or what they call a monk. Guy who's extra organized, very tech geeky, tech savvy. Um, then here comes Kimberly, who, who he meets actually on his way to, the, to detention. She's kind of like busy on her phone, you know, just in her own little world. Uh, now, these three, you know, and with Billy, he kind of blew up his lunchbox, which you find out later on in the movie. That's how he ended up in detention. Uh, and Kimberly, apparently she punched somebody and like and knocked their tooth out and ended up getting in detention like that. Um but you find out something else, which I'm going to touch on. So, Zach, apparently he plays hooky from school, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you know, he always goes to, like, this this quarry, which actually plays um, the, the setting as to where they get their powers from. Um, and he's just eating his lunch, and, and he has his binoculars, he's sightseeing, and he sees this girl, you know, in the distance on top of, like, a cliff, and she's doing yoga, who turns out to be Trini. Um, you know, so that's how those five, you know, came to, came to be. That's how their characters were introduced. Um, Billy's getting bullied by some guy in detention. You know, he's like the detention bully or whatever. He's breaking his colored pencils and everything like that. When, when Billy's trying to be organized, like, okay, this colored pencil goes here. This one goes here. You know, he's trying to be, you know, like he's extra geeky. Um, but the bully's picking on him. Jason comes to the rescue you know, he picks on him, bitch slaps him, and <laughs> literally, and, you know, he kind of punks the guy out, so it's kind of funny, so they become friends from that, uh, now this is interesting, because in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, they didn't meet in detention, they actually met, um, at, like, a local juice bar, like, they were never, uh, against... Um, what was I going with that? Like, yeah, like they weren't uh, never in trouble or anything like that. Uh, another thing I, I'm noticing too, and I'm just now realizing this: there, there was no mention of either Skull or Bulk. You know, for those who are familiar with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, it was a running uh, gag. You know, those who were like the comedy relief, like the, they were the high school bullies, and they will be picking on anybody and everybody, especially Billy. And I don't know if that one bully in the movie was supposed to be either Skull or Bulk. I don't think he, they were even referencing them at all. Um, so that was kind of like disappointing that they didn't put some type of reference of, of those two in there. Um, but yeah, so that's how they met versus how they met in the mo movie. In the movie, they met in, in detention. Well, those three, Amy... And, um, well, I keep saying Amy, but I'm thinking of Amy Jo Johnson, who was, you know, who's the one that played Kimberly in the original uh, Mighty Wolf and Power Rangers series. But yeah, Kimberly, Billy, and Jason, that's how they met in detention. Um, so, as the movie goes on, you know, Billy, um, they're getting ready to let school out, they're getting ready to go home. Billy's trying to hang out with Jason. Jason's telling him, hey, I got this ankle bracelet on. I gotta be, I'm on house arrest. I can't go and hang out with you like you wanted to because Billy's been trying to get him to hang out with him. Uh, Billy promises to let him borrow uh, the van that his mom lets him use um, for a couple hours if he takes him somewhere and goes somewhere with him. So he was like, cool. Um, oh, and I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. While they're in detention... Uh, 
Kimberly receives a text message on her phone. You know, she's like a cheerleader and things like that. Apparently, she showed uh, some picture that's been circulating around the school, which she said she didn't. But they had like a little mean girls moment where, you know, she's the cheerleader and they said that they were cutting her out. They had this picture with all three of them in it and they literally got a picture and they cut her out and stabbed the picture with some scissors to the wall. And she took the scissors and she had long hair when she came in. So she cut it short, you know, kind of like being a rebel, <laughs> I guess. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, that was kind of different. Um, can't believe she was just she was she, she was a cheerleader per se. It seems like in the original Mighty Wolf for Power Rangers series, she wasn't that she was actually like a gymnast. She was a gymnast. I don't think they was gym. I think they said she was a cheerleader uh, in the new movie. Yes, yeah, she was. She was. I'm getting beside myself. Jason was actually a martial arts instructor in a black belt. Um, and Billy, you know, he was, you know, very geeky, just hanging out at the bar, you know, at, at the juice bar. I don't, I don't want to get it confused. You know, it wasn't alcohol there. At least I don't think so. But yeah, that's how those characters were introduced. Zach was there. You know, he was. Um, like the like the cool guy in school doing with the dance moves and with Trini, you know, she was also like a, a martial arts, uh, kind of like a Tai Chi, you know, fighter, but she knew martial arts as well. So that's how those five are different from the five characters that were in in this, which which is funny because Trini in this new movie, she she actually had more in common with Kimberly in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series because you know she was doing yoga, she's doing gymnastics, you know they're exercising like that. That's kind of like the common ground they had. Um, but yeah, so moving further into the movie, as I was saying, Billy wanted to hang out with Jason. Jason telling him, "Hey man, I can't, I, I can't do anything." Um, you know, I got to be at home before, you know, seven. Otherwise, his ankle bracelet is going to go off and he's going to get in trouble. Um, but Billy told him that, hey, if, if you come there, I could uh, pretty much jailbreak the ankle bracelet um, to where you won't, to where the alarm won't go off and you don't have to worry about, you know, getting in trouble. So. In Jason's home, you know, and, you know, up until this point, this is like the first little bit of the movie. Jason's dad has been, like, getting on his case about him being a star player, and then he jacking a car and uh, wrecking it or t taking a vehicle that I'm assuming that either he gave him or he stole. It's one or the, two, one, one or the other. And he wrecked it. And, um... You know, he's getting on his case about, you know, being a star player or anything like, and everything like that. Now he ruined his life and things like that, and, you know, kind of being like the typical, you know, high school football jockey dad, you know. You know, this is your one shot. How dare you mess it up, you know what I mean? So, it's kind of like that. Um, like, I didn't even talk about, like, the very first part of the movie. Like I said, I'm just highlighting the differences. And at the very first part of the movie, they show the Power Rangers. The Red Ranger was Zordon. The other Rangers were kind of dead. Uh, the Yellow Ranger was some alien. Basically, all the Rangers were aliens. Rita was the Green Ranger. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, you know, I don't want to get too far ahead. This is terrible, by the way. I am very sleepy. But, um, but yeah, let me get my thoughts together a little bit better. So, as Jason is, you know, he made it back home in time before the anchor was went off, and um, he sees, you know, like he overhears his dad talking about him. He looks over, sees like one of his little football trophies. He ends up breaking it, gets on his bike, and he takes off to Billy's house. And uh, he gets over there, you know, Billy... You know, his mom answered the door in like such a, like a surprise fan. Like, oh, Jason, like you know, what I'm saying like she can't believe that this cool kid is coming to you know, kick it with her son. So she ended up, you know, letting him in. Billy, you know, he goes to to the basement where Billy has all like his little machines and all his little gadgets and computers work that he tinkers with. Um, 
and they go down there and you know the alarm starts going off on his ankle bracelet so billy he has he has like this this metal screen that he wraps that he puts jason's foot on like a stool and he wraps it wraps this little metal uh uh gate like a, uh, wrap this i don't know like it almost looks like a metal fence that's been cut off you know and he wraps it around his foot to kind of like stop the um like the ankle bracelet from like going off or whatever like that but it still does or i don't, I don't know what he was doing with it but he wraps it around his um his uh his his ankle bracelet and you know he's on his computer being a little tech savvy he takes the chip out of the ankle bracelet puts it in the flash drive and he puts the flash drive in his computer uh in his laptop and he's kind of like jailbreaking it to where it's st- it's 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 only like the, the signal is only going off as as if he's at home that's basically what it's doing like he's kind of tricking it and to make it say no matter what he's always at his house so i don't know how he managed to pull it off for the entire uh you know movie because they never showed jason taking the ankle bracelet off at all so that's kind of funny um so yeah so they finally jailbreak it they get in the car and it turns out billy you know billy's dad died um and I forgot if I don't remember if they mentioned how he died, but basically what him and his what Billy and his dad used to do is like they were kind of like like they were like amateur treasure hunters, but they were really good at finding where the treasure was. Like they could like pinpoint where was the last point uh, that the, this treasure was supposed to be supposedly found, or if there was anything big there or any like massive find, and they would like you know do a little tech you know, mathematics in their head and they would pinpoint, you know, exactly where it is and they would always be accurate. So Billy, he did that and he found out that there was something big at this quarry. So him and Jason, they go to, you know, like the quarry, you know, you see signs that says illegal and, you know, they go to this area in the quarry and they're rigging, you got this big box of dynamite over there lugging over there him and jason and you know while he's over there rigging up his dynamite and everything like that jason asks him you know you said i can get the van for a few hours so he leaves ends up going to the van he i don't know i guess he's seen something out the corner of his eye goes into the the um goes into the forest right there next that's adjacent to where um the quarry is and he sees kimberly you know, doing a beautiful swan dive, backward swan dive, into the into the lake, you know, she dives in the water, doesn't come up, so he starts getting all panicky, and like Kimberly jumping his name, um, yelling her name out, and, um, you know, trying to see if she's all right, uh, you know, and, and she comes from up around the, uh, the side, and says, well, how do you know what you know they have a little talk then you know she talks about running away with jason and you know they i guess it would say it was like love at first sight like this is something else that was interesting kimberly and jason never had a room had like a relationship in the original mighty Morphin power rangers series so this is something that they changed i think they kind of teased it in mighty Morphin power rangers but they never went through with it because, you know, as you know, if for those of you who have seen it later on, Tommy and Kimberly got into a relationship. So this is kind of like different right here. So, but in the main movie, J- Jason and Kimberly kind of like had like a thing going on. They never became like official, quote unquote, but they were, you know, you know, they were pretty much into each other. Um, So that's another difference that they had. So while Kimberly and Jason, you know, they're getting ready to take off um they hear this big explosion you know billy he's over there ringing up the dynamite he clicks the button it doesn't work he switches the wire over there and then boom it just blasts so everybody comes to see what's come you know what's happening zach finally introduces himself to the group um then uh then trini 
which, you know, throughout the, this movie, they pronounce her name very wrong. You know, her, her name was pronounced Trini, but the way they were pronounced it, it was like they wanted to say Trinity without the T, you know, there was, there was pronouncing it like, it, it was weird. They were saying it like too fast. Like they were saying it like Trini. Like that's how they were pronouncing it. They were saying it Trini, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's pronounced Trini, but that was, that was something else I noticed that they messed up on. Um, but yeah, so Zach, he comes over there. He notices that, you know, there's this metal wall and there's like these little glowing, you know, colorful coins in there. So he takes a pickaxe and he starts picking at the wall and, you know, trying to free the, the coins that's in there. So once he does, you know, he's breaking the, the glass with a pickaxe and everybody gets their little, you know, the little power coin or whatever. And, um... Or like the morphers, I don't know if they were called power coins. They never really specified, to my knowledge. But I'm, I'm gonna just call them power coins, just for the, um, just to be safe, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so then the alarm goes off. The people starts coming. Uh, you know, the security that's at the quarry, they start coming over there. They rush back to the van, and it's this big chase scene. You um, know, Billy and Jason. They are, you know, they jumped into the van. Kimberly and Trini, they're running towards the side. They end up having to, you know, ride over there and pull them in. And then out of, out of nowhere, Zach jumps on top of the van and he gets pulled in. And they're running, they're, they're out running because they knock down, on, the, on their way out of the quarry, they knock down this, like, metal pipe and, like, this big metal structure came collapsing and it blocked off the security from chasing them so they already are like in the free but they still got to get out of there so they chase so they're run, they're racing and going and going and going and um they're trying to outrun a train so as soon as they hit the, the uh that railroad crossing it's like they, as soon as they break through that first uh you know little block stick that comes down I don't, I, I'm sorry I can't think I don't know what they, they what the official name for that is but they you know it comes down and they end up not you know making it through the train hits them car bounces down a mountainside and the car is messed up bad so they don't um you know they don't uh You know, which if you look at the car, you would think they would get they would have got banged up. Apparently, out of nowhere, they ended up making it back home. I guess they teleported uh, with the power of power coins or whatever. They wake up and all of a sudden they're incredibly strong. You know, Kimberly she gets a text message on her phone that's being kind of like disrespectful. She crushes it with a bare hand. And Jason wakes up. He looks in the mirror. All of a sudden, he got like massive six six pack abs he's throwing up to the side he's trying to reach for the sink he breaks the side of the sink i, I believe they revealed that in the trailer so um you know he's cleaning his face uh billy you know he goes back to school he sees the guy um that's always bullying him he's like oh you ain't got your hero with you today so he tries to pick on him tries to break his wrist doesn't work tries to headbutt billy and then you know billy's face is like metal now you know almost like wolverine and he the guy knocks himself out so billy's all of a sudden he's like the cool kid now like oh yeah the nerd you know knocked out like a bully so that was that was something cool um Which is kind of funny because I think Zach and Jason actually had to come to Billy's rescue when like Bulk and Skull was picking on him in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, series. And, you know, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember what they did. I think they like knocked him into some garbage cans, like kicked him down the hallway or something like that. But, like I can't remember what exactly happened, but I know they embarrassed themselves pretty, uh, pretty bad. Um, thanks to Jason and Zach, but in this one, you know, Billy ended up becoming, 
uh, pretty good. So they end up, meet, so Kimberly ends up meeting them at the lunch table. All the nerds are like, "Hey, you're the cool guy now," and you know they're getting all jealous of her. Not that that's relevant or anything. So he ends up going off with Kimberly. They get with Jason and they see the they put the power coins on like the little lunch uh, line. Um, and you know they're talking about it. All of a sudden, like the entire lunch area, right there, you know where they serve the food, um, it, it starts like boiling and then melting the metal that's on there. They ended up having to take their their power coins. They run back to to the quarry, um, and there's this big gap, which is like a, a canyon, you know. And, and they see Zach and they see Trini there, and Trini she's being shy or anything like, and everything like that. So when they try to when they see her, she takes off and run, and everybody's like kind of there. And they're talking at first, and they know why they're there because, like, they all got these strange, which seems like superhuman powers. Trini seems like she already caught on to what was was happening. Like, she knew she had them, but she didn't know what they were. So she ends up being like. The, the the mystery girl she ends up being shy and you know when they try to talk to her she just takes off out of nowhere and Zach you know I think he kind of liked her a little bit he he chases after her and everybody chases after her and things like that and there's like this big Grand Canyon sized gap it looks like and they're running they're running Trini being the first one to jump over it um, there was nothing like this happening in um in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers mind you but yeah, Trini jumps over it. Then Zach, you know, you know, he said, "This is crazy." He's like, "Hey, I live for crazy," and he just, you know, jumps over it clear. And Kimberly and Jason, they go. Billy, you know, he's right there. He's doing all the mathematics in his head. He's like, "Okay, if I die, then you know, send my mom, but my mom can find somebody else that can take care." You know, he's just going over it in his head. So he jumps. He makes it to like the very edge, holds on, climbs up. Then as he gets up there, he just like falls back and falls into the the pit, and then they think he's di he's he you know he died, but he hears them yell. Um, they hear him yell, you know, hey, you guys need to come down here. You know, there's more down here. You know, so they jump down into the water, uh, this little lake that was down there, and this is actually a cool reference that they made d during this scene. Now, if you've seen the trailer, they actually uh, made a reference to this too. Um, while they're in the water, the Power Ranger, uh, the Ranger colors started to like glow in the water. And Zach says, Hey, cool, I'm black. And Billy says, Why are you the black one? You know, now for those of you who don't know, because you was, probably wasn't around when the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was, um, you know, was on, or like, or that, or you just didn't pay attention to like the, you know, other things that were happening in the show after uh there was a bit of controversy with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers um they thought that it was like some racist notions going on like the Black Ranger was black you know they had the Asian Ranger you know was yellow you know things like that so they figured it was like some type of racist thing going on which they constantly keep kept confirming that it wasn't but um they it, that was kind of like a, a jab at that so as they're in the water, Billy dives deeper into the water and he says, hey, there's more down there. So they dive down and it's like a, like kind of like a portal almost, kind of like a, a water wall. And on the other side of that wall, you know, w was the command center. And they just kind of, it's kind of like, I don't know how to put it. It's, it's almost like it's a lake and then it's like a veil right there where the lake stops and everything beneath there is just like just dry land you know which is kind of reminiscent to when Power Rangers Zeo started when they first entered the command center that veil was actually there and I remember Tommy he actually touched the veil and he said hey it's, this is like cool you know it was almost like cool water so 
when they jump through it, that's how they got their Zeo powers, which kind of is like a mixed reference in the movie. But I'm going to get to that when I get to it. Um, so they finally fall through the lake, end up uh, getting finding a command center. Alpha wakes up out of nowhere, and she's, you know, she's, uh, you know, Alpha's walking down the, you know, the command center. They see her, they run and hide, and Alpha's pulling them all together and things like that. It's like, hey, y'all have the power coins. And, you know, they meet Zordon uh, for the first time. And things like that. He tells them that, hey, you guys are the Power Coins. You're the Power Rangers. La, la, la. And they, you know, of course, typically, like, they don't believe him. And things like that. It was too weird. But they end up leaving. And Zordon kind of gets into Jason's head and lets him know, like, hey, you know that I'm telling you the truth. So they agreed to meet back there later on. Um, the following day, you know, which they do, and in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, they never got their powers like that. It was just like this massive earthquake when Rita was reawakening, and then they got teleported to the command center out of nowhere. So, You know, and Zordon kind of like gave them their morphers and told them that, hey, you guys are the teenagers with attitude, la la la, and that's how they got their power. So they kind of went more into detail with the, with this recreation as to how they got their powers versus the series, which was kind of like a um, kind of quick. Um, the you know when they got back to the command center the other day, uh, the, you know the next day. They, um, you know, they were trying to, they got into on like these, these platforms, which, which is kind of like in a circle and the morphing grid was right there in the middle and they were trying to, you know, morph into power rangers and everything like that. They couldn't do it. And, you know, when they couldn't do it, <laughs> and this was kind of like a little funny segment, uh, Zordon actually told Alpha t to take him to the pit. Now, the pit was the area that was right in front of the command center. Like, as soon as they fell from the lake right there, that w that area was the pit. So, they were trying to get him to um, train against the putties that, you know, Rita had, which looked completely different, obviously, from the 90s. The putties were like humanoid-looking gray clay dolls. Um... In here, they just look like they were created from Earth, and some of them look like little golems and, you know, little rock abominations. You know, that's what they look like. Um, they were made from, like, any every substance on Earth. So, um, they had, like, this little, you know, training montage, of course. You know, Billy, he's over there learning how to fight. You know, he's sparring with Rita and Jason. Um... You know, Kimberly and Trini and Zach, they're training over there as well. And then it cuts off to Jason. You know, his dad is a fisherman. He, his dad is a commercial fisherman. So they pull in, you know, the rain is real heavy and they're feeling, you know, like, okay, they need to go in. So they pull in their net and, like, this big alien thing drops down, which is, you know, if you knew from watching the beginning, that's Rita. Um, and it's crazy because they dropped her down, you know, at commercial fishing boats they have like this little area uh in the inside of their boat where they drop all the fish fish to uh well some of them do and they ended up dropping rita down there right down there the following day you know they brought a sheriff in and you know rita she wakes up you know you see the, the green power coin glowing in her hand and she throughout the, the movie up until the point where she got her powers back she has like this obsession for gold and she's just going like, you know, gold, gold, gold. You know, she needs gold. She needs gold. She needs more gold. She eats it, and the more that she eats it, you know, the more that her staff reforms. And, you know, she's trying to get more gold so she can rebuild Goldar to find the Zeo Crystal. Now, the Zeo Crystal was never referenced or mentioned in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series until the very end where they lost their, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers powers and the command center blew up. And they found out that the Zeo Crystal was right beneath it. And they took it and 
they ended up collapsing to like an, an, an underneath command center, and that's when they got the Zeo powers in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, series, and it crossed over into the second series Power Rangers Zeo. So they, th this is what I mean. They had like a, a mixed reference. They, they they referenced the Zeo crystals a lot sooner than what they did in you know the original series, and that was kind of like the focal point. Rita was alive. She, uh, she was coming to look for the Zeo crystal. Um, and he was, you know, trying to, you know, find it. And it was kind of like a race to find that. So, you know, Rita's back alive. She's going around collecting all the gold. She even beats up a homeless guy, takes his gold teeth that was in his mouth, and she puts it in her ears. Which is, she, she takes, like, one of the gold uh, teeth, and she, she ends up putting it. I don't know if she already had one, or she ended up just taking his that was in his mouth, and she ended up putting the one in hers, and that, that, that was kind of kind of funny, kind of messed up, but it was kind of funny, uh, so, again, after, after they found Rita, you know, cop goes down there, sees, sees it, Rita comes back to life, goes on a quest for gold to rebuild her staff and to make Goldar, um, who looked nothing like he did in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, uh, series, <clears throat> but um but yeah uh so they're still training and trying to get you know their you know get their ability to morph and every time they fail Zordon can and this is, and this is again back to the running gag they're making fun of them uh, not making fun of them, but it's kind of like, it's funny, because it seems like every time they try to morph and they fail, Zoran says, back to the pit. <laughs> like, he keeps, like, sending them back to the pit to train. And then later on that night, instead of all going home, they decide to build, like, a little campfire. And the reason why they probably can't morph is because they're not connected to one another. Um, you know, so they decide to go around the campfire and I just never happened in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers you know at all they never really had a moment where they just connected and confessed you know how they really felt about themselves or like open op open themselves up to their friends like that it was never like a big moment um like that like they had like episodes that were kind of like dedicated to them but they never really you know opened up the way they did in this movie so you know Zach he goes first he talks about how, you know, his mom, you know, is sick. It's just him and his mom. And, you know, he take he, he takes care of her. And he's worried that he's going to lose her and things like that. And, you know, how he cherishes the friendship of those guys. And he how, how much he enjoys being with them. Uh, Billy goes next. And, you know, he talks about how, you know, his dad, as I was mentioning earlier, how they were, you know, they enjoy spending time together by going on like these little treasure hunts and things like that. And they were wondering.